Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of The Road to Superman. This is episode 32, and today we have got our first very controversial look at Clark Kent, and some spoilerish set photos of the villain of this movie, and I have a crazy theory about it. I genuinely think it would make so much sense and would explain why this first photo looks the way it does. So don't worry, I will talk non-spoilers first, and then make it very clear when we go into spoilers spoiler territory. But first with Clark Kent. And so this is what David Corrin sweats Clark Kent will look like in James Gunn's Superman movie. Yeah, this won't be loved by many. Before we talk about the obvious, let's discuss the rest of the look. The suit and brown bag look very nice, and the glasses also work very well. But then we get to the haircut. Wow. In the UK, this is a very common hairstyle among teenage boys, and many have made the comparison to broccoli. And I see what they mean. I don't think this looks like the best hairstyle to me, and is definitely not what I was expecting at all. However, technically this disguise is probably the most believable disguise we have ever seen. Before now, it was just the glasses and a very small hairstyle change that made Clark and Superman look so different, but that was never that believable. We all kind of just accepted it as it was classed as the norm, whereas if we put this Clark versus this Superman, they look extremely different. The hair going over his forehead actually changes the way his face looks as it covers more facial features up. Not only that, but if you combine those with their personality differences and their posture, I think we will feel how different these two characters are. If you looked at this person walking down the street, you wouldn't think he is Superman. So the disguise itself actually is amazing. It's just the hairstyle that to most looks bad. But see, this is the issue I have with comic adaptations. If Clark looked like this in the comics, then people wouldn't have an issue with it because it would be true to the comics comic books and would be classed as comic accurate. But because he hasn't looked like this before, it is instantly getting criticised by most, no matter how much more logical this appearance is compared to how he looks in the comics. Let's face it, if you knew what Superman looked like and you were walking down the street and you passed a 6 foot 4 man with jet black hair brushed back similarly to Superman's but just with glasses on, you're most likely going to notice him and thinks he looks like Superman. Whereas this this actually makes far more sense. It's just a tall guy with a perm and glasses. He has the most recognisable facial features on a person covered up. I'm not a huge fan of how he looks, but from a logical and realistic perspective, this makes sense. Now, for all we know, this could just be Clark rushing into work because he is late and maybe he didn't get time to brush his hair, but I think it's fair to say that this is the look for Clark Kent. And actually, I like it. I know people will say I'm just blindly loving everything about this movie, but no. When you think about what the definition of disguise is, which is a means of altering one's appearance to conceal one's identity, then this 100% meets all the requirements. A completely different hairstyle to Superman, one that covers up half of his face and still through the suit and glasses still looks like Clark Kent. And his personality will also help sell the disguise. So I do actually like this look in terms of how it helps the movie sell the disguise factor of Clark Kent. I mean, you put these two people next to one another and you think they are two different people. That is exactly what Clark wants to be the case. Now finally, the whole Daily Planet crew have been spotted coming out of the spaceship from earlier on in the day, and we also have seen Eve Teschmucker on set too. News seems to be coming through thick and fast, so when any new pieces of information come out, this web series will be the place to be to stay up to date. So make sure to let me know your thoughts on Clark's look in James Gunn's Superman movie in the comments below. Now before we enter spoiler zone, here is another photo of David Corrin sweat as Superman, and I think he looks great here. He really sells the role as Superman, and the suit does need tweaking in post, but overall, this is a fantastic look for the character, and also very different to how Clark Kent looks. And here is also a photo of Lex Luthor on set. He has got visible cuts on his head, and I think I know why. So now let's move on to the spoiler zone of this episode. Anyone that doesn't want to know any spoilers, this is where you should end the video. So you have been warned. 
So we start with this shot of Rick Flag Senior and the engineer with two soldiers and Superman has fallen to the ground just out of shot. Now this is very interesting. It appears that the government are taking Superman down and Rick Flag is heading the operation with the engineer helping out too. But how would they be able to take down Superman? Well, from this shot, we can see that they are not alone. A man wearing all black is holding Superman and pushing him forward. So Superman has been arrested, but who is this man in all black? Well, there are two names that have been circulating. Ultraman, who was a leak mentioned a while ago, and Ulysses, his real name being Neil Quinn. Now, as you guys know, I'm not an expert on comics, but from some research I have done, Neil Quinn is an enemy of Superman who traveled across five dimensions in search of worlds that could provide the fuel necessary to sustain his planet. Five million human lives will apparently do that, which is what Superman has to stop. So this could very well be him. However, the fact he is on the government's side to me implies that they have either adapted this character and maybe he is someone the government can control or created, or this isn't Neil Quinn. Now the leak before was that Ultraman would be in this film, but he would be a clone of Superman made by Lex Luthor. So loosely adapting who Ultraman is, and I wonder if this is actually a clone of Superman who was able to take down the Man of Steel. And it actually makes more sense. And now to my crazy theory that is most likely incorrect, but it is that maybe what if this first photo of Superman isn't actually Superman, but Ultraman's Superman costume? Because if we look at the two costumes, they do have slightly different designs. The collars are different and the belts are different. And whilst yes, the lighting is different, the suits are different colors and the first image is battle damaged. So what if the first photo is actually of the villain of the movie, hiding in plain sight. So Gunn has actually shown us the villain right from the start and all the uproar on how Superman looks in the first image actually becomes invalid in the movie because it was actually the villain instead. Think about people's reactions to this first photo. Everyone questioned why did he choose this image as the first photo to release? It could just be a bad decision, but I think it has a story purpose. When you see this photo, something feels off. The tone doesn't feel right. It doesn't give you that warm, hopeful feeling that Superman should. And I think that is on purpose, because if my theory is true, then you're supposed to feel like that when you see Ultraman pretending to be Superman in the movie. When we got the set photos of Superman, everyone was also questioning why didn't they choose one of these images to release of Superman instead? They look so much better than what we got. And I go back to what I just said, because I think it was on purpose. I don't think this is Superman. Superman. I think this is Ultraman pretending to be Superman. Even the facial expression is of one of anger or moodiness. Superman isn't supposed to be like that, and the way Superman looks on set completely contrasts this photo. So I think this first photo isn't of Superman, it's of Ultraman pretending to be Superman. And James Gunn did that on purpose. Or at least I hope so. If he didn't, then it's just a terrible decision from James. But I hope this theory is true. It's most likely isn't correct, but I quite like that theory. Maybe the government or the section that Rick Flag works for hires Lex Luthor to help create a clone of Superman that they can control, and they give Luthor something in return, potentially their votes or backing in the election, to become president. So the government and Luthor frame Superman for attacking Lex Luthor, who has these cuts on his head, and that way they can arrest him. So once Superman is captured and in their custody, they create a very similar Superman Man costume that is darker and battle damaged to show the difference between Ultraman and Superman. And so then they send Ultraman out into the world claiming to be the Man of Steel. It may be a situation where at first he does what the government tells him to do, but as time goes on, he becomes uncontrollable. And then the government is forced to release Superman to take him down and stop him from destroying the world. I think that would be an awesome story, and I want to know what you guys think of it too. I think it incorporates Lex being the main villain, pulling all the strings, but also allows Ultraman to be the physical force in the story. So let me know what you think of my theory in the comments below. But that is all for today's episode of The Road to Superman. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. I hope to see you here again soon. So until then, have a great day. Bye.